This week on the show, photographer Kyle Nishioka. I'm photographer Brian Fisher. And I'm model Roxanne Kelly. And this is Twip Glam. Welcome back to Twip Glam, this week in photos, Glamour Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Twip Glam. This is our first guest that is from a fan of the old show. I love it. <laughs> Kyle yeah. is... Uh, he would be old school by our standards. Definitely, I think, years I think ago. He sent us our first email about five years ago when we first went into this adventure, and uh, his work was good. And when we got back in touch with him to sort of look at our beta episodes, I went back and looked at his stuff, and I'm like, oh, that was really good. Yeah. So. <laughs> so let's interview him. That's what we oh, said. that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> hello, Kyle. Wonderful to have you on the show. Hi. Glad to be here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us all the way from Hawaii, and it's a different time zone. So, <laughs> Yeah, th this uh, between the fact that I'm nocturnal and Roxanne is a no work... not really a morning person. No, I work and, late nights. Um, so. <laughs> you're in Hawaii. We, it, we're, we're recording this at a strangely early time of day. Indeed. But it worked. Lots of concealer. We finally got it all together. <laughs> yeah, um, Kyle, how did you uh, how did you get into photography? Well, I guess like most uh, photographers, my friends kind of dragged me into it. I grabbed my first camera, my first DSLR anyway, back in 07 or no 2008. Had a bunch of computer geek friends, and we all decided to we take up another hobby, and. Uh, after a few years, I got into lighting, and then from that, I got into shooting models, and then now I'm here. Wow, Fantastic. it's a lot of progress in just, what, seven, ten, ten. years? Ten yeah. years? <laughs> yeah. Nine years? That's crazy. Well, and and the, your, your perhaps nerdly nature, if I might say, <laughs> um, yeah. it shows that you have definite technical excellence. When we look mm -hmm. at your work, you... Uh, You've taken great care to really do finely crafted photography in many different genres. And, you know, we're focusing on glamour, but in looking through your portfolio, you shoot all kinds of things with great proficiency. Uh, before we get to uh, images, we uh, are a glamour podcast, and therefore there is a bit of nudity. So if you are looking at this on the main iTunes feed or the main YouTube feed, you're going to see some modesty boxes to keep people happy. Yep. We got to keep people happy. But <laughs> if you'd like to see the unedited images, just pop over to thisweekinphoto.com, sign into the website. It is at the free level that it unlocks the unedited footage. And it will be the second video in the blog post. It'll only appear if you're signed in. Won't cost you a dime. And once you've saved the password on your computer, you just automatically pop in for the next one. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you like the modesty boxes, just keep watching it right there. <laughs> I don't like the modesty boxes. Oh, fine. I want to see the whole piece of art. <laughs> I see. And it is. So uh, the first picture is one that you sent in to us uh, as an example of your work. And um, it's I love so it. so cool. Yeah. It was Fire. our user image a few episodes back. And I wanted to ask uh, kind of... A little, a little more technical. What exactly you do in the way of settings? How how high does your ISO have to be cranked in order to capture all that flame? It depends. I think this one was at ISO four hundred. I know I've gone down to ISO one hundred because the fire is the thing that blows out the shot the most. Really, I would have thought it would be would need to be higher than that. Oh no, no! Fire is brighter than than almost brighter than the strobe. I have to get a model light to kind of compete with the fire. I see, and and then you you're are you using like rear curtain sync to get the uh, the strobe at the end of the. Oh yeah, the so uh, so from start to finish, oh, it's uh, rear curtain sync, but it's on bulb mode, so I can control when it starts and stops. Okay. And then I just have one strobe on this one. It'll be camera left, and it's probably at uh, one quarter power, I'm guessing. And uh, that's off of a what is that? The Godox 360. Okay. So. I used to try and do this with speed lights, but I was firing at uh, full power, not getting enough. Mm. 
the the Godox, uh, and I'm never sure if I'm pronouncing that right. They have really started to make a name for themselves. When they first came out, I thought, eh, another another Chinese knockoff mm -hmm. unit. But we keep running into more and more people using them and loving them. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. they're not horribly expensive, and they really really do seem to work quite well. But uh, the image itself is really neat. Yeah, where'd you find a fire dancer? Yeah, <laughs> I want to learn. One, <laughs> <laughs> this one's a traveling model, and I, at least in Hawaii, there are a bunch of fire dancers that kind of. Uh, uh, it's not entirely legal to do it just anywhere, so they have to go kind of far outside of town to light up, and they to almost light always up. try. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's called a burn. <laughs> oh, that's so funny! I just think light up as as yes. in smoking, but. Yeah, it's kind of that uh, Burning Man culture too, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, I I bet you find this gal at Burning Man. I bet she probably does enjoy. So uh, it was this there. done in Hawaii? Yes. Do you shoot yeah, outside so, of Hawaii? Uh, when I go on trips, I do. Yes, but I I rarely get a chance to do that. That makes sense. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. What did you say? Oh yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought. So she's a traveling model. I've done um, maybe two other shoots with the. Uh, models that do fire dancing. I've done a whole bunch of other uh, fire dancing shots with uh, people locally who just who just spin fire for the fun of it. But huh. uh, yeah, to get a kind of a like a portfolio quality shot, you kind of have to go and do a one on one kind of far away from the crowd. Yeah. That do makes you end sense. up taking a lot of exposures to to get a good one? Uh, for long exposures? Yes, it's kind of hard to rapid fire uh, these kinds of shots. Yeah. I I I just love the swirl, mm -hmm. mm. and and as we said before, I love that this one is an implied. It, it's I don't I don't know if you could have planned that. Yeah, oh, no. you're right. <laughs> no, it's gorgeous. I I love the, her leg and the way it's um the way it's kind of in the fire ring. Yeah. It's very neat. Yeah, neat neat picture, and um, you know we're talking about heading out to the desert here this next year. We are. You, mm. Can you learn how to do this? Sure, right. Yeah, just before before just we go. Bef the day yeah. before. How hard could it be? Oh, it's probably no big deal. <laughs> well, there are some fire tools that don't take that much uh, practice to use. Doing uh, this one would be a little chancy, but there's others that you don't have to put that much at risk. What's uh, What exactly is burning? What What are they? Uh, it, the fuel? Yeah, what's the fuel? Uh, Napta. Otherwise, okay. if you're going to go shopping, it's Coleman's camping fuel. Oh. All right. And then it's so in it some, like a uh, <laughs> uh, cotton ball or something. She's holding up a, what they call fire fingers, which is a bunch of uh, metal uh, sticks on the end of a glove. And at the tip of that, there's Kevlar uh, balls. It's not oh, okay. cotton. Oh, that would work better. Wouldn't burn up. I would yeah. imagine. That's Very neat. Cool. I have Kevlar now that I think of it. Oh, well, maybe we maybe we figure it out. Maybe we will I think you it should out. test it first. You have less hair than me. <laughs> I got two kids. I can I can spare one. That's yeah, fine. There you go. Uh, this one's a gorgeous shot too. What an athletic uh, model. Yeah, did you artificially raise her or did she have some serious altitude? <laughs> I'm actually standing at the bottom of a hill. Okay. Slight slight hill. She's jumping so. on top. You can kind of see the sand dude on the bottom mm -hmm. so yeah upwards uh, there's an upwards angle to the shot too that's what makes it look like this it, it's it's a good cheat yeah it's what a is she lesson, a gymnast <laughs> yeah gymnast yep yep gorgeous the, form well, i i that's one of the things i was going to point out she is actually quite muscular very fit but still yeah. very feminine yeah um i know that's the goal right yeah to keep your femininity and it's been strobed so that's very good timing yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And the cloud's in the right place. Perfectly I, I shaped mean, around her, actually. <laughs> it's, uh, I, you might at first, you just go, oh, neat picture and move along. But if you stare at it for a while, you go, that was actually kind of hard to do. Yeah, that was a <laughs> tough one. And you can only do it so many times because I'll bet your model gets really tired when they're jumping over and over again. I bet. Yeah, yep. <laughs> So capture it the first, second, or third time, or yeah. else you're done. <laughs> Did you have to put your strobe up real high to kind of sort of get the light to come in in the right direction? or? No, it was um, even with her. She's It may look like she's jumping really high, but it's only, a, you know, she's standing from a ground level and jumping up only a foot, foot and a half. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, the effect is great. It is. Mm -hmm. And I bet she's thrilled with that picture. As a model, I look at this and I think, oh, yeah. that shows your skill set, your 
your muscularness. <laughs> it's all well, the great and stuff. And because she's got the lead leg on your side and mm-hmm. the hips are twisted, it flattens her tummy really nice. It does. Well, not that she probably has Models one. Models love but that. Yes, that's true. It's good. Gymnasts like it. have such flat stomachs, though. There's pretty much... There's so much muscle. Yeah, there's very few obese gymnasts I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even even just a little bit of pudgy ones, they're just not there around. I, I have not considered this as a way to control they're... my pudginess, though. <laughs> so. uh, you don't want to become a gymnast. No, I just don't think it's going to work this late oh, in life. Oh, gosh. I think that's such a really funny mental picture. <laughs> I, uh, I look terrible <laughs> in tights. That's, that's why the yoga didn't happen. Uh, you could just wear a, like a little top like that ah. and a thong or something yeah. if you want. <laughs> sure. <laughs> We will not be featuring that picture in the episode. <laughs> On the next episode. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow. Amazing man. Amazing form. Amazing. Gorgeous model. I love the choice of that sort of deep, organic, dark. Yeah. That it's it, and, and it's pulling light away from her around, kind of deepening the shadows around her. Mm-hmm. So she pops. The pose mm-hmm. is fantastic, yeah. too. Is I this, love that. Is this single strobe? Yes. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I had just a... I don't know, I might not even have a modifier on it, just probably just a reflector. Yeah, it looks... I'm looking at the little shadow from the forward knee back onto the calf. It looks real, relatively hard. But what that same thing did is it gave you that beautiful line down from her rib cage. Mm-hmm. Down her muscle, which made her, it increased her shapeliness, mm-hmm. and it gave that shadow under her her breast, which sort of enhanced that as well. It's true. <laughs> yeah, you know the um, the thing about the pointing of the toes, which I think is gorgeous in this shot. It just makes the legs seem like they're going forever. Yes, absolutely um, does. It's a great perk for. You can overdo it. <laughs> yeah, you can. I had a very tall model do that once, and I was like, I might have to shorten him. I might have to make oh, the legs no. bizarrely shorter because she looked very sort too of long, elongated. lanky, too lanky. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> this is not an issue with this uh, this it, model. It's a lovely pose. It's a lovely model. Do you happen to remember who the model is? Her name. Uh, she goes by Lily, and she's another traveling model. Okay. Well, very pretty, and I like the hands up. I, I like, like the hands that too. a lot of times I do that pose because <laughs> it's I, so flattering. Yeah, I was, I was, I, you, there are some people that you go through their portfolio and you're like, hands on head, hands on head, hands on head. Yeah, like, I might be one great, of those. But there are limits. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> but you also have to remember, and, and it's one of the things that uh, it's too easy to get critical of repeating something that works when in a client situation, they don't see the stuff. Your portfolio has to be diverse, but if you've got one killer move, there's a lot of cases where you just use it over and over again because the client never sees what the other client did. It's true. And so if you're looking uh, to make some money. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> use and it works. by putting the arms up like that, uh, you do risk the armpit, uh, which in this case, she has a lovely armpit, as odd as that might sound. That is funny. <laughs> but um, the truth be told, you know, some people, they, they have some discoloration in the armpit you're going to have to control huh. in post-production. I never even thought of that. Um, but See, I don't, I don't do that. I, so. <laughs> I don't, it looks as though she just is a very finely haired person and the armpit is well controlled thanks to her being lean hmm. and good coloration. Absolutely, unless he fixed it post production. Well, I'm, yeah, fix every uh, photo in post production, but yeah, she is as he described. Yeah, that makes sense. I, uh, I also, uh, and I know we say this almost every podcast, but her skin treatment is uh, really nice. It feels natural. You, you, like you know, she might have amazing skin head to toe, or maybe you just did a really nice job of cleaning it up without making it look fake. Yeah. Mm. Um. It, it's definitely in a very good zone. This um, brought this in for a very particular reason, and that is that this girl is seriously lean and seriously muscular. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and right. she is over the border towards somebody that if photographed wrong uh, will not be feminine. Uh, she mm. she she could pop out a couple of muscles and you'd be like meh. Yeah. 
<laughs> bodybuilder competition. <laughs> yeah, which not really, but I, I, some people that's their thing. It's it's not mine. Yeah, I yeah I prefer the feminine look. I I, I, I do like too. some muscle tone, but so the soft. thing that the the takeaway that I saw in this picture that brought it in was that um, the arms over the head creates an exaggerated hourglass and then her butt kind of poking out a bit gives you that curve mm -hmm. and it takes her a long ways towards femininity and attractiveness in the viewer's mind or at least in our viewers in in our minds <laughs> Well, we're everyone. Oh, yeah, of course we're everyone. Wait, wait, other people see this? I know, you're right. This is all for us. <laughs> Sorry, playing towards the median. Yes, you're right. The, yeah. the median <laughs> viewer likes a little curve. Yes, that's and true. And there are certain curves that are universal to all cultures because they're buried in our DNA. And one of them is the angle of the back to buttock, hmm. which they have studied. And it turns out that almost every uh, race and uh, background you find, I forgot the number, but it's like 41 degrees is ideal and they all seem to pick it. Interesting. Probably because it's good for procreation. Yeah, probably. People are funny that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've read those magazines, I don't know if you have, but where they compare different cultures, body images, and yes. how they vary quite extremely. They, they, it, well, it's, it is not surprising that they vary, but then there's things like this one angle where yeah. they test them all and they're all the same. And you're like, well, <laughs> well, that one's social and that one's buried in the DNA somewhere. Yeah. And it's pretty hard coded. Yeah. That's like, you know, symmet symmetry in the face is mm -hmm. hard coded to your DNA. You will find that attractive. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's, it's a nice picture. Uh, <laughs> is she uh, local or a traveler or? Uh, she was local at the time I took the picture. I think she moved to the Big Island uh, well, after that. I think we it's have been a couple to, of years. We're going to have to go visit Hawaii to borrow your models. Yeah. <laughs> She's lovely. Yeah. She is lovely. And when posed properly, she has a beautiful form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it demonstrates some posing skill to pull that off and still make it very feminine. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean that feminine in a... Uh, very broad spectrum. I'm sure she's not ugly ever. No. I don't want to don't want to no. trigger somebody. <laughs> it's um that she, I think what you're trying to get at is that she's not super curvy. Yes. And in that way women are models are typically wanted to be curvy. So yes. you're looking at making somebody that's not quite as curvy into someone who looks curvy. Yes, and Taking somebody who could get these very straight lines added with their musculature. Yep. And making the curve step ahead of the musculature. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you look at the muscles around her thigh and hip. It's I mean, crazy. I know. She's insane. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what she does, but mm -hmm. she surfs maybe. No, oh, diver. Diver? Yeah. Diving. Oh, uh, okay. Free yeah. diving. That makes, that makes a lot Excellent. of sense. Uh, oh, this is a gorgeous angle. I really like it. Straight up. <laughs> Straight on top of her. This is another case of using that dark, deep background and then the shadows to bring out somebody's shape. And she's really pretty. I love mm. her. It's a, I guess she kind of looks Islander. Was, it's, was this a planned image or were you doing a shoot and you're like, look at that. We were doing a shoot and yeah, this is one of those, uh, towards the later part of the shoot and I eventually ended up climbing up a hill well more like up up a, up a small cliff and she's uh, resting on a ledge hmm. is that uh, is that rock or soil or it almost looks like wood, wood. Maybe? yeah it does no that's definitely a rock that's uh, lava rock okay oh, so well, you that's can right. see the layers got, of it you got those nice dark yeah <laughs> well I uh, I did my 10th wedding anniversary in Kauai where they've got all that beautiful, rich red soil. And I thought, oh, I should have scheduled some shoots. But yeah. I, I oh, not my, on your anniversary. I think my wife might have taken that poorly. <laughs> <laughs> like, honey, I know we had a fancy dinner for our wedding anniversary, but I'm going to take some pictures yeah. <laughs> of the scenery. <laughs> She's awfully understanding generally, but I she think you might be pushing it. She is very understanding, but I think that might push it right over the limit. Uh. Um, it's a very pretty image. It is. It's beautiful. She's really pretty. I really like yeah. her look. It would, uh, 
it is very sort of magazine or calendar esque. Mm-hmm. Actually, mm-hmm. that would totally fit well in a calendar. Yeah. You're right. And she's got the arms above her head again. Same. Yeah. Same pose. Actually, three of the images have been that way. Well, and that's it's that's just a common factor. That that might be the lesson I'm trying to drive home with this oh, episode. Oh, well, <laughs> I jumped too quickly to that assumption. No, you got the exact thing. See, yes, it worked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shocking. That's funny. <laughs> hey, it's another one. <laughs> it is another one. I love the pose anyway. This looks so. like Utah. It does, huh? Uh, I believe it's Red Rock in Nevada. Okay. Okay. That Very. is a, a seriously long model. Look at her torso and her legs. Yes. She has some length to her. She is, she's probably tall. Or so it looks like. <laughs> it, it certainly has that look about it. Was a little wider angle lens? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that, so that gives you some of that added stretch. Mm-hmm. You know, this one, I, I really like the pose, but it's different because her show leg is on the back leg. When I talk show leg, I mean the one that's bent. And usually yeah, it's the, the one closest to the camera is typically where you want to do that too. But... It actually works great in this image. Yeah, it gives it, some depth to it. Well, and it 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 enhances the length when you do the straighter leg in front. Okay. Yeah. Well, it totally worked because um, I see how tall she is, probably is. <laughs> yeah. Well, she might. Maybe she's a very well proportioned midget. Maybe. <laughs> that is not a politically correct term. Yes. Screw politically correct. My uh, extremely petite friend. Uh huh. Refuses to be called anything but a midget. Really? Yes, because she's like, that's our word. I own it. And oh. no tall person is going to tell me what I can be called. Huh. So. <laughs> How tall is she? Uh, like 3'1". Oh, something. wow. Okay, so really very short. Yeah. Yes. No, no. She, she's a proper little person. Yes, little person. Yep. But if you call her that, she gets upset. Oh, okay. Well, that's weird. <laughs> because you're trying to be polite when you're yeah, saying well, that. Well, <laughs> that's... Sometimes being polite is an insult. Yeah, I guess. Because you're yeah. now, side subject, yes, not sorry. really the subject of our <laughs> uh, discussion here, but it, uh, it is and it isn't because our field falls outside of uh, what some people consider polite society. Yes, for sure. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, that's why I have to go by a stage name, even yeah, though I'm creating art. I feel like I, I call her Phil all the time. Yeah, Phil. <laughs> no, um, it. Uh, yeah. There is an awareness of politically correct. And we go through this funny thing as photographers where when you're on a shoot, your whole world changes. It is not politically correct to walk up to a girl at, a, you know, at the supermarket and go, I'd like to talk about the symmetry of your face and what your butt looks like. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, they hit you. And um, well, you definitely don't tell a girl in the supermarket to suck it in. <laughs> yeah. I, I will not use those words because it doesn't seem safe. <laughs> but um, that's funny. On the other hand, when you go on a photo shoot, your whole world flips upside down, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're talking about you know all of the various everything uh, you bits could talk and about. <laughs> yeah. You have to be careful yeah. to keep these. Uh, you got to go through this sort of conversion on the way back home, like. A, all right. And professionalism. I mean, even on mm-hmm. the shoot, yeah. many I've had photographers, and I won't mention names, and it was not you, but oh, come and Great adjust change. my clothing for me without asking. And especially when it's a swimsuit, it's just not comfortable. <laughs> it's like, okay, so tell me what I need to do or ask my permission. And then, yeah. then I'll say, oh, yeah, you can fix it. Oh, it's in the back. I can't reach it. Go for it. But especially when it's right here or like, <laughs> I don't know, it's just a little awkward. <laughs> I've, uh, well... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> May well, I, I adjust just goes a long way. <laughs> I have a separate issue there because in my other profession, I I I'm, I work in the medical field and I work on people and inside of people. Yeah. All the time, and so my my personal barriers are a little screwed up. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, so I have sort of a third set. of... <laughs> being careful yeah you have to be careful all the time (laughs) oh this is gorgeous a very very classic image yes i love this and it's the beach and we can't go wrong with the beach i i I see this image i feel very at home yes (laughs) actually it could be california look at the rocks it could be california except our sand isn't that nice you're right well depending on where but you're right it's we we are we have darker sand than that for the most part and really cold water 
Yeah. Oh, I can't imagine. She's probably <laughs> not super chilly at this point. <laughs> you can always tell people that have only heard about California because they assume yeah. that the water is warm here. It's we really get our water from Alaska. Cold. We get really cold yeah. water. You go into your knees and you're covered in goosebumps and you're like, nope, yeah. no further. <laughs> Our, we have to be really careful in California to put the model in the water at the very end of the shoot. Because otherwise her lips turn blue. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, the water is 50 degrees or less. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but, it's a little chilly. Um, anyway, it, it's a really lovely image. I, I have... Uh, a couple images in my portfolio that are somewhat reminiscent of this. Very similar. You're right. Really, um, which is probably why I like it. Oh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. It's a great shot. Um, I like the pointed toe and on the, the back leg. And the curvature. Oh, man. And the her curve back. of the back. She has some that, flexibility. That is a serious. Mm -hmm. she, she probably, what? I was going to say she needs to see a chiropractor, but she probably doesn't because she, she's that flexible. Yeah, she probably doesn't have any issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm. Is Was this a portfolio shoot or what, uh, what prompted this Yeah, I this believe one? This, one, this one was. She was traveling from out of town. I think it was just a trade shoot. Mm. Oh, a I like trade. those because, yeah, that's a really good trade because she's gorgeous. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I really like doing trade because I can do kind of what I want. Yeah. <laughs> Where in a page shoot, you have to do exactly what the photographer wants because they're looking for a certain image. But if it's a collaboration, it's kind of nice. Well, I when I moved out of uh, running my life based on my photography income and it became something I didn't have to make money at if I didn't feel like it, I have to say I, it gave me tremendous freedom because I can literally just, you know, pick whatever I want to do and move forward with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've I, done some weird stuff. <laughs> we've, we've had some fun. We have. Mm -hmm. But um, when, when, you, when it's purely, you know, somebody else's plan, it, it's restrictive. It is. Although I think this, is, this image, this is very, you know, saleable, commercial, yep. bikini glamour kind of thing. Yeah, I guarantee she was happy with this shot. Yes, I think she was. Yep. Any artificial lighting, or is that just uh, cloud softening up the uh, light? I know I had a strobe on it, but it was probably yeah, just fill light. Just dialed way back to yeah, give a little. Yeah, I guess I see a little sparkle in her eyes. Yeah, and that's how you can tell. Anytime yeah. a girl has sparkle in her eyes, it means they're using a strobe. Or you've made them <laughs> very upset. <laughs> oh, wait, those are flames. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is a beautiful shape to her. Yeah, similar. Another very thin model, though. Man, very yes, thin. She is a touch thin. <laughs> um, I, now, sunlight on the opposite side really brings out the shape of her buttock and back. Mm -hmm. um, Phil, obviously. Has that Phil been softened or is it uh, just straight yeah, stroke? Just straight off of a reflector, if anything. Probably okay. just gel to match the sun. Very good. You know, when posing, there's so few shots that you're able to have your feet kind of up like she has them, rather than flat on the surface. Yeah. Um, I think this it works with this one barely anymore, it, and it would have been awkward. Yeah, it works here because you have the hard angles of her knees, mm -hmm. and um, the the hand is a little grippy. Yeah. Um, but Avoiding it still works kind of because <laughs> you've got all of this geometry going and the bikini top, the zigzag, you've added that noise. And when you add clothing with geometric noise, you get away with more angles on your model. Mm, that's always mm -hmm. nice. So, yeah, I mean, the, it's like sharp angles on the knees and then really soft yeah. angles on the arms. If, and, and if you think about it, if you take and lay your model flat and you stretch out her arms and then you put the feet up, the, the shot's destroyed. Yeah. You, you just can't do it. But if the model is in a ball, the feet can be at any angle you want, and it still works. Hmm. So. I still like the pointed toes the best. Usually. Yes. yes. Usually. <laughs> I'm good with it. You can point your toes. Well, I, you know, I've looked at my own photos when they come back, and I every time I have not pointed my toes in the shot i'm like why didn't i point my toes i would like this better if i had my toes uh, pointed. 
I, anytime you don't, I'll just Photoshop some like gorilla feet that are pointed <laughs> on the, the image. Or some man feet. Yes. I want man feet on my <laughs> legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the scene here is beautiful. I mean, the, the model's great, but man, this is like a really cool setting for a photo. Yeah, and, and yeah. controlled the light quite nicely. Um, the reflections what, are beautiful. We, we don't usually go heavily into equipment, but do you remember offhand what lens this is? Probably a 24. Uh, Canon or a Nikon? Uh, well, Nikon. Nikon. It it flares nicely. It has that one little spot on mm -hmm. the bottom, and you know, a lot of lenses, if you did this, would have just a cornucopia of geometric flares coming back behind. Um, it's really handled it nicely. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. I'm looking at buying a, a quite unusual lens that is is designed for doing just this from Venus hmm. Optics. But that's a review for another episode. <laughs> and... And another seven hundred dollars I can't spend right now. Uh oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but I will because <laughs> I do <laughs> sometimes. Uh, it's it's this same very universal, very nice pose. Mm -hmm. The uh, obelisk in the background is what is that? So this is one of the uh, more well known uh, uh, scenic spots on Oahu. It's called the Halona Blowhole, and I was trying to get a shot where the where the surf will, you know, hit the hit the rocks at a certain angle, and it'll shoot up water a water spout in the background, but uh, eventually it became tiring to wait for a wave. So I, I got this shot and a bunch of others, but the whole idea was to try and time it right to coincide with the blowhole, hmm. and uh, yeah, this one came out better. Yeah, that's well, great. It's very pretty. I guess if you could get the blowhole to blow up over the sun, it would be spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, all the it light coming been, in through. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just to right of the meant, obelisk, I think. I yeah, thought you went literally been. at first. Is the obelisk? <laughs> uh, obviously, that's that's artificial. Mm -hmm. What What is it? It's, that's just a marker. Just I a guess, marker? So the, just like a so navigation you, marker? No, no. So you can figure out where the blowhole oh. is when you oh, look right. at it from. Um, there's... Behind me, where I'm standing, and behind me is where the parking lot is, and all the tourists, they don't even, you know, they don't leave the parking lot. <laughs> they look down onto the blowhole, so you need okay. to find it somehow. That makes oh. sense. Why? Because they're afraid of being swept in? I would have found it funnier if it was a great big right. arrow that pointed where the blowhole was. Yeah. <laughs> big red arrow. <laughs> Hanging in the sky? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, on a pole. Oh, on a pole. Yeah, okay, that's much more practical. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's really nice. It's uh, the the little wider lens that just brought a little wrap to it is nice, mm -hmm. and I think it extended her legs just a little bit, mm -hmm. and um, it again it handled the flare really really nicely. Uh, and if you didn't want any evident flare, you could take that little green spot out. I don't, I don't see a reason to, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's an impressive technical performance. Oh, thanks. Ooh, another very pretty model. She has uh, a I lot of really very inside. pretty. You oh, have good taste. Wait a second. <laughs> Is this the last image? This would be the last image. How did <laughs> you know? It. I made up maybe. I <laughs> our, our listeners probably get tired of hearing yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's it's just. I have to stop. We okay. call that a running joke. I know. I'm going to try to stop since it'll be every time. <laughs> so we, we, I didn't see a tremendous amount of indoor work uh, in the group, but. I liked this one a lot. Mm, yeah. Yeah, she was the one, also the one from Red Rock. Oh, oh. Jessica. oh, yeah. Is she okay. tall? No, I'd say 5'4", five, 5'3". Five, oh, so not at all. It's just oh, the it's way. all proportion. It is. I mean, without having anything to um, compare it to, you can yeah. just guess. But, well, she's beautiful. It's nice. I, I like that it has a little bit of a cute factor to it, that little peek around like you've caught me kind of thing over the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Playful. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. And that's what it, that and its basic color palette is why I chose it. It, uh, um, it feels warm. It feels rich. It feels like a day spa kind of a thing. Yeah, she would just need a little more clothing on if it was an ad for a day spa. Well, yes, <laughs> Depend, depends on the day spa. You're right. 
Um, I like the little hair light. Is that, did you find that or did you add that? No, that was uh, laden from inside the closet. Okay. Uh, it works. It all just works. See, <clears throat> this feels like the most natural pose when you're in front of the camera. And then after you finish a shoot, you realize that you have to have a gap right between the shoulder and the chin. And yes. as a model, it doesn't seem natural. Just it, yeah, you got to so like kind of lift the chin, extend the neck, takes, and lift the chin. Just it takes a, a lot of practice to feel like lifting the chin is the right thing to do. Well, and this is <laughs> for like, an image. this is like yeah. discovering that thing in the background that you didn't know was going to be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you take a bunch of pictures like these are going to be great, and you're like, oh no, chin. Yeah, <laughs> no chin. It's hidden in the shoulder. Yeah. Um, yeah. This has just enough, um, and it does give that playful look. A little bit more higher, and she looks a little more confident. I, I, think. I find that I'm always trying to get models to roll their shoulder back a little. Yeah. And um, it's just unnatural, the feeling of it. Yes. I mean, still. Well, uh, it's the old <laughs> if it was natural, then everyone. Would yeah, like exactly. That. <laughs> uh, I love it. Well, um, I loved all your images. What a fun, uh, fun thing to have a fan on the show. Um, and you're a great photographer. Um, what do you have for plans for, um, for in the future? Well, just, uh, more photo shoots. I just came back from a trip to, uh, Atlanta and Vegas. So I think I, I, I shot a lot of cosplay when I was in Atlanta, when I was at Fun. Dragon Con. Oh, Ooh. good times. Yeah. I think I posted all of those photos. Still working on the photos from Vegas. Uh, I worked with Jessica again and a bunch of other friends out there. Hmm. So I'm still, I got a nice big backlog of photos I got to edit, but, awesome. uh, as far as shooting plans go, nothing really in the works. But, uh, yeah, I'm always looking for traveling models when they come through Hawaii. Very I bet. Good. I, uh, you talk about Dragon Con. I have been thinking about partnering up with another photographer and building a fairly elaborate set and mm. to go to cons and shoot people, sell pictures. Hmm. And um, that's a good idea. I've, I've talked to a couple of the smaller cons that are like, hmm, maybe we can make you a deal. Yeah. Get, get you a, a triple wide booth so we can do a, a sci fi end and a medieval end. <laughs> that would be and, fun. Uh, <laughs> it, but it's a big undertaking for one guy. And I have some other things going. Uh, just a couple. Yeah. A couple of minor things yeah. going on in life. <laughs> uh, so, it, where all do you display your work? Uh, right now, you can find links to everything at uh, kylenishioka.com. I've got uh, Instagram and Facebook, and uh, both at Kyle Nishioka. But it's, yeah, I, the reason I put the, that little uh, watermark on every, on every image I post is so that it gets funneled towards my website. Yeah, and and you, uh, you seem to be pretty uh, easily Googled. Oh, yeah. There, there aren't yeah. a ton of... Kyle Nishiokas? Kyle Nishiokas oh, out I there. can't imagine why not. I'm a Brian <laughs> Fisher. Trust me, he... You just pick one. There's, There's a lots million. Of us. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, we would love to get any feedback you guys have, and if you'd like to do that, or if you'd like to share your work with us, send us your link at the bottom of every blog post. There's a little form. Make sure you put your email address in so we can actually get back in touch with you. We read every comment on. Uh, YouTube, we read every comment on iTunes, and we do try to get back to people as best we can. Yeah, thanks again to our uh, our guests and This Week in Photo for making this podcast possible. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or check out our unedited episodes on thisweekinphoto.com. And we'll see you next time on Twip Glam. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.